Our Computex 2025 coverage is made possible by Corsair, Asus, Fantix, G-Skill, Lian Lee, Seasonic, Thermal Grizzly, Trikes, Team Group, Antec, Pro Gamers Group, Inwin, Bitspower, Be Quiet, Cable Mod, and Cougar. Welcome back, guys. I'm Stuart from GGF. It is Computex Day 2. That's right, I keep on forgetting. It's been a bit of a blur. We are here at the Thermal Grizzly booth. Now, it's just this section here. Nothing too crazy in terms of booth size. We have some monstrosities behind me, but Thermal Grizzly do have quite a lot of more products than you may actually think. So we're going to look at all of their thermal gear and also their new water cooling gear, which I'm really interested to check out. First off here, we have Thermal Grizzly's new water cooling lineup. Now you may have seen, I was very, very lucky to get their new Deltamate 5090 Astral GPU block. I've got an unboxing on my channel and I've actually got a build I did. That's at the G-Skill booth. There's a video on that on my channel and the build is actually here at Comitex as well. I'll probably throw some B-roll of that build because I think having the block over here just doesn't do it justice on its own. Like it's a really nice looking block, but when it's in a build plumbed up, when it's got coolant running through it, it looks just so stunning. Uh, other items we have, we have more here than what I mentioned in the video. Of course, I mentioned the GPU block, but we have all of their fittings right here. We have their new Delta Mate. This is a Micro Pro 2 AM5 block. Eventually there will be Intel blocks. There will be more GPU blocks for other AIBs. I believe MSI, Astral 5080 as well. And then we have radiators that aren't here. Radiators will might be the last thing, but they're hoping to push out most of this by the end of the year. Radiators might be a little bit a little bit longer but it'll be good to see once we get everything all in a build how it all works together but first off I want to cover these fittings here so you might be running well hey there's a cube here that's because these fittings have had a lot go into them the design phase of it the engineering and the materials and things like that so a lot of times when you have a, a fitting it's gonna be hard to explain just say you have like an X and a Y axis these fittings are perfectly square, especially when it comes to the 90s. So when you start joining them together, you don't end up uh, sort of breaching out into a rectangle. The more you join together, it's just gonna stay into a perfect cube. So these are all of the 90s joined together. And you might be running, well, hey, how do they join all of these 90s together? Now, these are all rotary 90s. They don't look it, but they are all rotary 90s. So let me take off this bottom bit. I'll have to get so much close up of this because you're not going to be able to see. So this is a standard rotary 90 with a 16 mil compression hard tube fitting on the end of it. There's actually no other little part to the fitting. The rotary is actually built into the inside and then you use an eight millimeter uh, Allen key head to undo it. So that's how that works. All of the uh, Allen key heads are now eight millimeters. The top is the inside, the inside of all the fittings are one size Allen key. And then there's gonna be extensions. I believe they told me there's seven, 10.5, 14, and 28 millimeters, I believe, for the extensions. For the hard shoe fitting, it's just gonna be 16 millimeters at the moment. Let me know if you would prefer any other sizes like 12 or 14. And then we have, of course, stop fittings and then some other little fittings here, but I'll get some all B-roll on this. But I think that's pretty much most of the fittings you would need. The only things I would think of is something like an offset, but because these fittings are such low profile, they don't have like a normal 90 I'm used to using. It has the 90 itself, and then it has this separate uh, rotary part, and that normally bulks it out. But the fact that these don't have that separate rotary part is you can make an offset uh, fitting pretty clean as well. And moving on to the Deltamate AM5 block, you might be running, well, hey, this looks like a goldish color. It will not be like this when it's done. Uh, the guys are pretty rushed to get this finished. They didn't have time to actually get it finished plating. It's actually gonna be the same as in the GPU block. It's gonna be finished. It's gonna be have that nickel plating over the top of it. Now, I mentioned in my unboxing on the Deltamate GPU block, it has a dual, a dual phase sort of finishing. It gets finished once and they go over the back of the block again to do all of the polishing. So pretty much it's a good shot here. I'll get some close-ups. So most of the block on the inside and some of the back will have a very matte, it's not rough, it's smooth, very matte finish. And then they CNC it again and that gives you the polished area. So you want the polished areas over like the die where the memory comes in contact, pretty much anywhere where a thermal pad is going to come in contact with the uh, anything that requires cooling is going to have that mirror finish and then everything else has that really nice it's hard to explain i don't think i've ever seen a block that has this uh real matte finish but it is really cool now more on this block it's not really too much more i can actually say it's 
basically just a CPU block. I'll take it out a little bit. I really like the design inside, just those channels and how it works. Of course, this has a specific die placement in mind on where it's going to uh, flow over the AMD chiplets because we all know they are a little bit different to how Intel works. You have your in and your out up the top here and just remember it's going to be silver at the end, not this gold is finished. I actually spoke to them and said, hey, this gold looks pretty cool. Um, would it be something they could do in the future and have like a color set like this one? The GPU could be like the gold as well. But at the moment, they're just focusing on the standard silver. I think it's kind of the right way to go. They're not going to bring out 50 or so SKUs. They could really go nuts with different color fittings. At the moment, they're just black. They could do different color blocks. But obviously, being new into the water cooling, they're just going to go with a few amount of SKUs, see how it goes, and then they can definitely go from there to add more. And then when we come around here, we do have the block that everyone has been really excited about. Um, I got my hands on that a few weeks ago. I did the build. Very, very nice block. I'll probably just link my video in the description so you guys can see the unboxing. Uh, I show things like it actually comes installed on, this is a actual proper PCB. So it comes on this PCB, the block comes installed. You can mount this in your chassis. Uh, you don't need to take it apart if you want to uh, measure your loop. If you don't have a GPU ready, this one's for the 5090 uh, Astral, it says it there. You can mount this in your system. You can uh, tube up your system. You can even run your system if you wanted to. Uh, get coolant going through it, see if it all works. And then when your GPU does arrive, you can dismantle it because this is exactly the same dimensions as the Astral uh, PCB. And you also have things like all the sizes for the thermal pads, a little bit of information of the engineers that went into it, everyone who went into making this block front and back. It's got the secondary side up there. It's got the primary side for all of the pad placements. It tells you all your screw dimensions you need and it has that manual. Now, I had some people comment saying, well, do they need to even give you a manual? Can't they just give you that? Of course, for legal reasons, they need to provide a manual, whether it's in the box, online, things like legal reasons, uh, hazardous substances, things like that they need to have on a manual. Normally, that stuff's like a couple of pages down the bottom. They got to have that. They don't want to put that on here. So that's why there will be a proper manual as well. And if you do lose this, you have this. But another good thing is once you take your air cooler off, you can mount it actually back onto this, put all your screws back together, put your air cooler safely away if you need to maybe RMA that in the future, put that away in the box and you have all of your screws there safe and sound. Over here, we have the dirt bench table. Now, this is interesting. It's not going to be a full test bench replacement like we've seen others with uh, power boards and all that. It just gives you extra peripheral attachments, auxiliary items, so your motherboard goes on top. To actually get this all up and running, you need to plug in a six pin PCIe power in, that'll do your power. Then you need to plug your fan in, your RGB in if you want the RGB, and then a USB in. And then that'll give you all the connectivity on this board. So there's a lot of micro SD slots here. So it's really for an enthusiast overclocker who is going through multiple boards. So this will come up in your system and that can hold things like data, uh, bench results and so on. There's also two SSD sleds in the bottom. They do data and power together. You just need to plug in the opposing uh, SSD ports into your motherboard to get that going. PSU goes underneath and then it also has a host of USB on the back. Host a USB there and it has your power and reset buttons if you don't want to use the ones on the motherboard. And then it also has your power and reset uh, input uh, connectors there as well. So yeah, it's not one that'll uh, convert the 24 pin, you don't plug the 24 pin in somewhere, you don't plug your PCI in somewhere, you don't plug your EPS in somewhere, it just has all those extra auxiliary items for your motherboard. But yeah, I think that's pretty much it on that. You can put a fan up the top there for your radiator, it does like a 360, a 240 or so on. It's not really for a custom loop, anything like that. Obviously, we know Debao is more into the overclocking and so on, but it's yeah, sort of for that niche area where those users will take advantage of that. Moving on to probably all of these items over here. Now we all know Thermal Grizzly for a very, very long time. I think at least 10 years now, they've been doing their thermal paste. They've got their minus pads. They've got the putty and they have a heap of more thermal paste over here. So it's gonna be hard to see. I'll get some top down shots of B-roll so we can actually see. You might be wondering, well, I thought thermal paste was just one type and thermal grizzly, but no, they actually have a lot. And it might be a little bit more sort of in depth than what you think. So you might see that, hey, one over here is the best performing, like the Cryonaut Extreme. You might think, hey, I'm just gonna go with that. But 
the high performance one might not necessarily be for you because it might not be for long term use, it might be more for liquid nitrogen overclocking, so you might want to step down a bit to a different one that can perform the same but over the time it might be better for you. But I want to start this side so I don't keep on going backwards and forwards. So we have the Thermal Grizzly Putty, you might be wondering well what is putty? I did a recent unboxing on the new Deltamate block and I talked a little bit about that there. There's three levels, there's a basic, advanced and the pro. So the putty is to, I wouldn't say it's a direct replacement for thermal pads, but things like when you're doing a, a GP water block over the uh, VRMs and so on, the performance is a little bit better when you're using the putty rather than thermal, uh, thermal pads. Now, the only disadvantage for me is it gets a little bit messy because if you're taking your blocks on and off, you're gonna have that putty go pretty much everywhere. A little bit messy, but the performance is there. I saw a recent review on this, and between the basic, advanced, and a pro, and there's a few degrees improvement over the standard thermal pads on each one, and then the step up gets uh, better and better for performance. But yeah, that's the putty there. Some of you guys might've used this, but it's pretty cool stuff that they're actually now can move away from thermal pads and start using this stuff on your GPU blocks. Now, moving over to the minus pads. These are basically thermal pad replacements. High performance thermal pads, if you uh, have an older GPU block or you need the right sizes, you can get some off Thermal Grizzly. They have the basic events and pro, and then these come in all the sizes that you need. They come in 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, and 3. They're the main common sizes, and they come in actually different dimensions for the sizes of the physical pad as well. And they have a new one here, which is the high compression. So if you're familiar with doing your GPU on the back side where the back plate goes, normally you put a strip along sort of at the front, a long strip around the back, and that is very uneven. Normally you throw a big, I would say a three millimeter uh, pad on there. This one is high compression, so it's very good for uneven surfaces. It'll fill those, uh, fill those grooves nicely, and the performance is quite impressive for that one. So that's why they come out with that one. It just makes it a little bit easier. With different size heights, it has that more squishiness for say a two, a 2.5 and a three. You could get away with this one, for running those three sizes. Moving over to the thermal paste here, not all of these are thermal paste, and this isn't Thermal Grizzly's complete range as well. They have a lot more on their website. They've probably just got the ones that want to focus here. We have the phase sheet, the cryo sheet, and the conductor naught extreme. These two here come in the actual sheet. Uh, a little bit easier if you're putting this on your GP or your CP on your IHS, and then the cryo sheet is a graphene thermal pad and that'll have your high performance as well. Don't want to cover too much on that. I don't really use them but I know some people out there do like them. Now moving over to the thermal paste over here. Now what I mentioned before as in maybe the most high performance thermal paste not, might not be for you. So the Cryonaut Extreme has been out for a while. That is really designed for pro overclockers, liquid nitrogen and so on but it's not meant to be used long term. So if the user doesn't really know that and they put this on, after a few months they might start degrading in performance. Now the latest one from Thermal Grizzly is a Duronaut. I saw a recent review on that from someone, I think it was Lab501, that had really good reviews. They did some testing on this and the performance of the Duronaut was, I think it was a fraction better or on par with the Cryonaut Extreme. Now the advantages of the Duronaut is it has that long-term use, so it lasts a lot longer. And there's a good little legend down here, which is also on the Thermal Grizzly website. It kind of gives you a, it gives you an overview of the best scenario of thermal paste for you. So it'll have like performance, the durability, ease of use, extreme OC, and how conductive it is. So for something like I said before, the extreme, the durability, it's not really high up there because it doesn't last as long as others. But the performance is there, but it's for extreme OC. But something like the Duronaut, it's more well-rounded. It has the uh, performance, it has long-term durability, the ease, ease of use is, I'd say, about medium, and it also has a bit of extreme OC, but it has the really good conductivity as well. So the Duronaut has just, I wouldn't say it's just launched, it's been out for a little while, and then I saw in the recent review I just mentioned that the thermal performance between each core was actually the lowest I've actually seen the differences. So normally when you apply thermal paste, you get your system going up, you have like a 20 something core CPU, you're always gonna have thermal uh, differences between each of those cores. And I think the differences between the uh, Duronaut, the average was only about three degrees, which is actually really, really good. Cause most of the time when you use uh, normally any thermal paste, you're gonna see anywhere between five to 10 degrees differences between your cores. So three degrees is pretty good for that. Now, this is actually on their website, which I mentioned. So if you aren't familiar what thermal paste is good for you, go on their website and that'll help guide you which one you need. Over here we have the Y-View. These have been out for a little while now. These have probably been helped 
to produce these because of the 12 volt high power because there's a lot of stuff that goes into these. It does the metering of the 12 volt cable, it does all of the thermals, the power consumption, and there's a lot more that goes into it. Now there is a new version that is coming out, the Wireview Pro 2. I'll get some close-ups on this. This can be used as a standalone item. Standalone as in it doesn't need any additional power, any additional USB connection. You can plug this straight into the GPU and it'll do per wire uh, thermal management. It can tell you the temperature per wire monitoring all of that stuff. It has a lot of information on the screen. There isn't one running now, so I can't show you it running. But if you do want to take it a little bit further, you can plug in the USB. It's actually now got a color screen. I don't know the resolution. You can send images, you can send stuff to the screen. So now you can actually run a splitter that goes from your power button to your PC and it actually goes in the middle there. So if it detects any uh, anomalies, you can actually shut down your computer. So if it uh, sees something out of range, if it sees something getting too hot, it can shut down your PC just as a fail safe. And it actually does real time data uh, logging, not just monitoring, but logging. I think they said every five seconds. So if something does go wrong, you can go back through those logs and see what's going on. So that'll probably be in the reverse and the normal, so reverse, whether whichever brand GPU you are going with, it'll always face the right way that you need it. So that is it at the Thermal Grizzly booth. Just a few of those products, the Thermal Paste, Thermal Putty, the Thermal Paste, and the new water cooling gear. But anyway, like always, I want to thank you guys for watching. I want to thank Thermal Grizzly for supporting my CombiTex coverage, and we'll see you in the next one.